Five years ago, when Barack Obama delivered his speech against the war in Iraq, I was a private first class, very new to the Marine Corps. I had just finished boot camp and was thankful that that experience was over. I was undergoing weapons training in the woods of North Carolina. Obviously, I didn't see the speech, I didn't hear about the speech, and I didn't read about the speech. Not many newspapers reached the woods where I was. However, even if I had seen the speech, I don't know if it would have, if I could have done much with it. I wouldn't say I'm politically apathetic at all. However, I, I was a Marine, and I knew as a member of a very prestigious organization that I had an obligation. Many men and women before me have established the military as an organization that remains primary, a, primarily apolitical. I respected that tradition and still do as a valuable part of American society and as, as well as the military which defends it. And so like most others in the active duty military, I chose not to publicly speak out and voice my opposition to the war. I reminded myself that I had an obligation to serve first and let others make decisions. I reminded myself of that obligation as I heard the war drums being beaten, as our commander in chief came up with every justification he could think of to invade Iraq. Some real, many fictional. I reminded myself of this obligation as I saw my, my friends who I went to boot camp with drive in on the, in the front lines of the opening invasion. I reminded myself of my obligation when I saw my friends' names on the television who weren't going to be returning. I reminded myself again of my obligation as I served myself in 2005 and saw firsthand the consequences of what can happen when the wrong person is selected to be President of the United States. And then in 2006, an important thing happened in my life. A page turned. I was discharged from, a, from the Marine Corps. For me, this meant my obligation of silence was over. And it's because that obligation is over that I am here before you today I'm ready to make a stand. I'm here before you today to stand for the candidate that has had the answers right for Iraq since the very beginning. I stand before the candidate who respects the military too much to use them as pawns in a proxy war. Yeah. I stand behind the man who made the right decision before I even had an opportunity to make that decision myself. I stand behind Barack Obama. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just a student. I don't have much. What I have, I offer, but I need your help. I ask you to make the same stand that I'm doing. Don't wallow in indecisiveness and indecision. Use the opportunity that we've been given by many men and women who have fought and died to make a stand yourselves. As I've said, I don't have a lot of resources, but what I do have, I offer. For tonight, I've been given the opportunity to read a speech, pardon me, a letter from Senator Obama to us tonight. This is from Barack Obama. Thank you for joining this nationwide moment, movement to turn the page on the misguided war in Iraq. Real change in this country can only come from the bottom up. By coming together today, you are challenging Washington to end a war and to seek a new beginning for our country. We know that the hard truth of the Iraq war is that it never should have been authorized and never should have been fought. The costs of this war have been catastrophic. Nearly 4,000 Americans killed, tens of thousands wounded, a trillion dollars will be spent, and America is less safe and less respected around the world. Five years ago, I stood up at a rally against going to war. The vote to authorize the war was in Congress was 10 days away and I was running for Senate. Some friends of mine advised me to keep quiet. Going to war in Iraq, they pointed out, was popular. All the other major candidates were supporting it. If the war goes well, they said, you'll th throw your political career away. But I think politics has to be about telling people where you stand. I did not think that Saddam Hussein posed an imminent threat. I was convinced that a war would distract us from Afghanistan and the real threat from Al-Qaeda. I believe that a war would fan the fame, flames of extremism and lead to more terrorism. So I went to the rally and argued against a rash war, a war not based on reason, but on politics, an occupation of undetermined length with undetermined costs and undetermined consequences. 
I was not alone. Though not a majority, millions of Americans like you and me opposed going to war. But Washington was determined to rush to war. That starts with a president who didn't tell the whole truth to the American people. But it doesn't end there. The American people were also failed by a media that too often reported spin instead of facts. A foreign policy elite that largely boarded the bandwagon for war. And most of all, by the Congress that voted to give the president the open-ended authority to wage war that he continues to use today. Let's be clear. Without that vote, there would be no war. The lesson of Iraq is that the conventional Washington thinking rushed us into a war that defied common sense. Too many people in Washington followed groupthink instead of thinking for themselves. Too many tried to look tough instead of doing the right thing. This is the conventional thinking that, that measures experience by the number of years you've lived in Washington, not the judgments you've made. But we're coming together to challenge this conventional thinking, not to conform it. It's time to end this war. It's time to start bringing our troops home immediately. It's time to look at who's got the most important foreign policy decision in recent history right and who's got it wrong. Today, you have all come together to rally for change. Later this month, on Saturday, October 13th, my campaign will bring together tens of thousands of supporters like you to canvas for change. I hope you will join us as we walk our neighborhoods and build support in our communities for turning the page in Iraq. You go to barackobama.com slash turn the page to sign up for one of the planned canvases or begin organizing one of your own in your own community. We don't need any more of the Washington experience that got us into this war. We need to come together to challenge Washington and to change America. Yeah. Let us come together to make that change. Let us come together to end this war. Let us come together to unite this country and to renew our global standing. Let us come together to change the world. Barack Obama, dated October 2nd, 2007. Thank you very much.